I'm honored to be here, and I want to thank Joe Salmonese and Brian Gilligan for inviting me. I want to thank and congratulate Rex Lee and Senator Scott Dibble, who are being honored this evening and speaking the truth. I am trying to speak my truth and live my truth and write my truth and even paint my truth. In an interview with Out Magazine, a reporter asked me the difference between good art and bad art. I don't, you know, how can somebody answer that? It's all subjective. What one person likes, another person doesn't like. So I think it's just a question of delivering real art. And speaking of another art form, what's going on with the young and the restless, huh? 20 years ago, I was on this show. It's been on for 38 years, and it takes place in the Midwest. It's significant to note that this show has 5 million American viewers daily that are in the middle of the Bible Belt. So 20 years ago, my character, Philip Chancellor III, died. And who would have guessed that in May Sweeps, my character did not actually die in the hospital, no. Reaching out to my little boy and my wife and my girlfriend and uh, Mrs. Chancellor and my mother Jill Abbott. No, actually, we just realized I faked my death 20 years ago. <laughs> in February, the producers and I decided that I would come back and my character would be gay and that he faked his death because he couldn't come out to the family 20 years ago. Finally, Philip is back and openly gay, and I am so excited to do this because I never saw this 20 years ago, you know? They are committed to showing a fully evolved, active, adult gay man who is an ex-husband, father, son, and brother with all the attributes and qualities of any leading character on a soap opera. 20 years ago, when I was first on the soap, I was encouraged by my agent to stay in the closet. Even today, there's only one other actor in daytime who's openly gay. Almost every weekend, 20 years ago, I would fly to different malls in the country and I would sign autographs. One time in Toronto, 7,000 people showed up and a girl asked a question. She said, do you have a, do you have a girlfriend? And I said, no. And they screamed excitedly, you know, because they thought I was straight and I wanted them to believe I was straight. I could not tell them that my boyfriend was right there in the audience supporting me. When I began the show, I was in my 20s, but I was playing 17, but my love interest on the show was actually 15, and she was the producer's daughter, Cricket. <laughs> and she and I were both originally from Wisconsin. She was very sweet, a very sheltered Hollywood heiress, and I was a closeted gay guy, you know, walking on a tightrope, not knowing if I should tell her that I was gay or not, afraid that my secret could ruin my Hollywood dreams. Eventually, I told her, like uh, two and a half years into it, and, and I had no idea what her, really, what her real feelings were. She just said, you know, why are you telling me this? I wasn't sure either, other than I just couldn't keep that secret any longer. This was also during the time that AIDS was just exploding in our community and in the press. My fear said the producers would not want a gay man to kiss their daughter. Not long after I left the show, Soap Opera Digest reported that my leaving the show was a mutual decision, that I had ended my three-year contract to audition for movie roles, which in part is true. So much has happened. I can't believe it's been 20 years. You know, I don't have the time to go into the challenges of, of uh, what we all have dealt with when my schizophrenic brother killed our mom and the questions that are always there when your other brother kills himself. Suicide. I don't have time to go into that. I don't have time to tell you how anxious I used to be and borderline paranoid that I became after losing my family and losing my fame and my fortune. I ended up having to wait tables again and bartend Ironically, at the same events that I had attended as a soap star, but, you know, I, I was out to the catering bosses. Strangely, I never lived more than a mile away from CBS in all these 20 years, and I would drive past it, 
with mixed emotions, you know? Uh, pride, regret, loss, jealousy, envy, excitement. So today, almost 20 years to the day I left the soap opera, I'm back on it. Where once I was encouraged to keep being gay a secret, I am proud to share with you that I am gay, the first openly gay actor hired by daytime soap for a principal role, and to have my character be gay as well, that's just incredible because it's been on 38 years and the gay word was only mentioned this May for the first time. <clears throat> I accept the Visibility Award in part with Maria Arena Bell, the new head writer at The Young and the Restless, and producer Josh O'Connell for not only bringing me back from the dead, but for having the courage to write Philip is gay. This means so much to me, you know? Unbelievable. By the way, remember the 17-year-old producer's daughter who played cricket, who I was so afraid to be honest with? You know, today she's a very liberal, sweet mother of two in Bel Air, and publicly said how cool it would be if my revived gay character would marry a man on The Young and the Restless. This show was seen in 30 countries by 10 million people. 10 million people are getting to know a gay man, Philip Chancellor III, who pops into their TV room every day. It is my sincere hope that perhaps Philip will show them that gay people are nothing to be afraid of. Perhaps by seeing a character they loved 20 years ago reappear and come out and live a full life, they will be moved to feel a little differently about the gay person in their very own family. Or at least maybe they'll start to talk about it. It was and is very important to me that everybody knows that I am gay. So when they're watching Philip, they're really thinking, hey, that's, that's really gay. <laughs> About five years ago, my paintings were discovered, and slowly, surely, I entered a new life, making my living as a fine artist. Though I painted my entire life, it never occurred to me that this could actually be a career. It's been therapy. <laughs> that's what it's been and another way in which I could speak my truth. I am grateful to have my work in so many collections in the States and overseas, and I want you to know that I will always lend my brush in any way that I can support the HRC. I am keenly aware of the impact and significant contributions they have made. I feel an obligation to build upon the work that has been done before me and do what I can to improve the rights for all gay men and, and women. Thank you very much.